Well, it is Wednesday and I'm back in the office. I had court this morning in Philadelphia and then I had virtual court in Cape May County, New Jersey. With that said, I did put out an article today on the Britt Reed possible criminal charges that are coming in Kansas City, Missouri. I know that I don't practice there, but there are uh, some similarities between the law there in Kansas City, Missouri and the law in Pennsylvania and New Jersey where our law firm practices. Right now, Mr. Reed has not been charged with anything and he deserves that presumption of innocence. But we do know that there was a accident, obviously uh, prior to the Super Bowl, I think it was the Thursday, um, two young children were injured pretty severely. I know that uh, one uh, is, I believe, out of the hospital. The other one, sadly, remains in the hospital. And I think that child remains uh, unconscious. So hopefully that child will wake up uh, very soon and will make it out of this without any issue. With regards to Mr. Reed, uh, we don't know if he was impaired legally, but we do know that he did make a statement to police following the accident. And he indicated that he had consumed at least two or three drinks before the accident. Uh, we also know that police did obtain a search warrant. Now I've done articles on blood, blood draws and search warrants and what the law uh, across the United States following the Birchfield decision uh, in the United States Supreme Court, what the law basically says is that police need a search warrant to draw blood. Now there are exceptions to it. One of the big exceptions is consent. Now it's unclear if Mr. Reed gave consent or police had obtained a warrant how soon after uh, they obtained his blood because there's always an issue with regards to impairment and the time that uh, goes by when a person is, in, uh, is exactly uh, impaired or not. So in Pennsylvania, we had that two hour rule with regards to blood evidence and it's unclear uh, when, when Mr. Reed's blood was taken, but, but we do know that it was taken. It's my understanding that it'll take approximately a month or so get those results back. Now, this is a, probably a high profile case. And I'm sure everyone's watching it. So maybe we might see results a little faster. With that said, even if he's not found to be impaired, he still faces a really serious charge of aggravated assault by vehicle if they find out that for some reason he was being reckless. Now, again, those are separate charges. There's aggravated assault by vehicle and there's aggravated assault by vehicle while DUI. Obviously, the aggravated assault by a vehicle while DUI is a more serious charge. Both are felony offenses, both in, in Missouri, in Pennsylvania, and in New Jersey. If, God forbid, a person dies in Pennsylvania as a result of a aggravated assault uh, by vehicle resulting in death, or otherwise known as a homicide by vehicle resulting in death, uh, while um, DUI is a mandatory minimum three-year state prison sentence. Hopefully that's not going to be the case here. It would be obviously a, a real tragedy for that to happen, and we're all praying for that young child in this case. But obviously, Brett Reed faces some serious criminal charges. Um, you know, in a DUI case, I always advocate uh, submitting to a breathalyzer test or a blood test. In this situation, uh, even before that, um, you know, he submitted to the breath test. Um, I'm sorry, he did not uh, submit, it, it appears voluntarily to the blood test. And again, my position here isn't to give moral advice, it is legal strategy advice. And legally speaking, that was probably the better decision to not consent because it forced police to get that warrant and he may have set up, set up a possible defense and it may have created more of an issue with police with regards to the warrant being uh, good and with regards to the amount of time that went by before they actually were able to take his blood. I imagine that the warrant did take a little bit of time so there may be a big time gap that the prosecution may not be able to explain. But as I've written in the past, the prosecution necessarily doesn't need the chemical evidence to establish drunk driving. Uh, Missouri, like Pennsylvania, like New Jersey, does have a general impairment a statute within their drunk driving code, which probably they could, uh, if they needed to, use in this case. He did admit to, to drinking alcohol. 
It's my understanding that there's both direct and circumstantial evidence with regards to impairment that I think the, I, I think I read in a few articles that they, they smelled alcohol in his breath. So that's pretty strong circumstantial evidence. But regardless, he has a presumption of innocence and we'll wait and see what happens. If you have questions about drunk driving in Pennsylvania or New Jersey, 215-755-9000 in Pennsylvania, 856-793-7429 in New Jersey, the website gambonlaw.com, a tremendous resource for you and your family. I will put a link to that article in this video. You can also sign up for our free weekly newsletter, which goes out every Friday, goes out to over 3,000 of our current and former clients. We know that a DUI, a DWI, or any criminal case can happen at any time. So we make ourselves available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Once again, 215-755-9000 in Pennsylvania, 856-793-7429 in New Jersey, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Have a great Wednesday. Hope all is well with you and your family, and I will talk to you soon.